Hello fellow problem solvers. So today we're going to be doing a problem from the 2011 IMO, problem number one. I suggest you try this problem out for a minimum of half an hour, ideally an hour and a half, but not more than three hours. If on the other hand you would like to go along with us, I suggest you take five to ten minutes, read the problem and get your first ideas out on paper. So let's begin. In essence, the problem is asking us how many of these pairs how many of these pairs can simultaneously divide this sum? Given that all these numbers, a1, a2, a3, and a4, are distinct positive integers. So the first idea you may notice is that every single one of these has some implications if they are true. Namely, from here, it follows that a1 plus a4 divides, it's an if and only if, a2 plus a3. And we may get the similar thing for every other one of these if they are true. The first thing you see from here is that if each and every one of these sums were true, then all the numbers would be equal, which would contradict their distinctiveness. Now, this is a common strategy you will see in algebra number theory whenever you're given general numbers, a1, a2, a3, a4, sometimes you can impose a condition without losing any of the generality of the problem. Here, this means that we can say, without the loss of generality, that a1 is less than a2 is less than a3 is less than a4. We're not losing anything with this, but we're gaining a ton, namely, if a3 and a4 are greater than a1 and a2, then their sum is greater than their sum. And since these are positive integers, that rules out this thing right here. In a similar vein, it also rules out this one right here. This means we can have at most four of these pairs dividing the sum. Now let's work with that. This is the point where I invite you to pause for 10 to 20 minutes and try to work with this, try to take the problem further. So given this, we have that Na is less than or equal to four. And now let's try and see if we can prove that Na can be equal to four. And while doing that, we would need to find all possible sets with A1, A2, A3, and A4, which satisfy these relationships. Now, the first order of business that you may have seen is that these two equations, imply that a1 plus a4 is equal to a2 plus a3. Now pause for a minute and ask yourself, how would you use this fact? Pause now. This is what I would do. Get a4 out of the picture. I would just rewrite a4 in terms of a2, a3, and a1. The condition would hold. We would have both of these equations satisfied. And these two would be simplified without a4. This is a general strategy that is used, especially in geometry. You want to simplify your problems, have less moving parts. We are getting rid of a4 so that we only have a1, a2, and a3 to deal with, thereby simplifying our problem. Simplifying a problem can be very useful because it's very easy to go back and it's much easier if you have less things to think about and to manipulate. Now I would try for five to 10 minutes. How would you proceed from here? Here's my solution. First notice that subtracting a1 plus a3 in this equation and a1 plus a2 in this equation simplifies the right hand side and still make sure that it's positive. Now, can we deduce anything here? Remember that a3 is greater than a2 is greater than a1 in this case. Well, here's a hint. If a divides b, that means that there exists an integer d such that 
a times d is equal to b. If we're talking about positive integers a and b, then there exists a positive integer d such that a times d is equal to b. But if b isn't that much bigger than a, that means d can't be that big. Can you see how that applies here? Well, because a2 minus 2a1 is greater than 0, there exists a positive integer d such that a1 plus a3 times d times d is equal to 2 times a2 minus 2 times a1. Now, if d was greater than or equal to 2, what would we get? Well, we'd get that 2a2 minus 2a1 is equal to da3 plus da1, which would be greater than or equal to 2a3 plus 2a1. And this would be greater than 2a2 minus plus 2a1. And this would be strictly greater than 2a2 minus 2a1, which would be a contradiction. Now, this might seem magic at first, but in reality, what I was just doing is thinking this thing right here isn't that much bigger than a3 plus a1. It can't be too big. And then I just formalized it with this. So d must be equal to 1, which means that a1 plus a3 is equal to 2a2 minus 2a1. Pause for five minutes and see how far you can take this now. Here's what I would do. Get rid of A3. It is the same principle we applied earlier. Instead of working with four variables, we wanted to work with three. And now instead of working with three variables, A3, A2, and A1, we can just work with two of them, thereby simplifying our problem. Now the final condition that we are left with is A1 plus A2 divides 4a2 minus 8a1, while also a2 being greater than 3a1. If you haven't paused before, pause for a minute now and think how would you solve this? Here's my take on this. It is the same pattern we saw before. There exists a d such that da1 plus da2 equals 4a2 minus 8a1. And because this is greater than zero, we know d is a positive integer. Now same as before, if d were greater than or equal to 4, we would get 4a2 minus 8a1, which would be equal to 4. Like da1 plus da2 would be greater than or equal to 4a1 plus 4a2, which would imply that 12a1 is less than or equal to 0, which is a contradiction. And now we're left with three cases, d equals one, two, and three. Let's do them. Case one, d is one. The condition rewrites as a one plus a two is equal to four a two minus eight a one, which gives us a two is equal to three a one. Now this would almost be a solution, but we have a condition that a two needs to be greater than three a one. So this case does not give us a solution. Let's get to the next case. Case two, d equals two. Now the condition rewrites as 2a1 plus 2a2 minus 4a2 minus 8a1. Now doing a little bit of algebra, this gives us uh, 2a2 is equal to 10a1. In other words, a2 is 5a1, which is greater than 3a1. So we're in the clear. Now what is a3? Well, we know a3 is equal to 2a2 minus 3a1, which here is 5 minus 3a1, which is 7a1. And finally, a4 is equal to a3 plus a2 minus a1, which is going to be 7 plus 5 minus 1, 11a1. Now, this gives us a family of solutions, namely a1, 5a1, 7a1 and 11a1. 
where a1 is a positive integer. Now let's go to the final case. Case 3. D equals 3. Here the condition rewrites as. Now a little bit of algebra here gives us a2 equaling 11 a1. Now what is a3? a3 is equal to 2a2 minus 3a1, which here is 22 minus 3. It is 19a1. And then a4 is equal to a3 plus a2 minus a1. 19 plus 11 minus 1 equals 29a1. And this gives us another family of solutions, namely a1, 11a1, 19a1, and 29a1, where a1 is a positive integer. Now let's bring it all together and sum it up. We first show that NA is less than or equal to 4. Then we just started doing some number theory and substitutions, which led us to a family of solutions, namely one set of solutions being A1, 5A1, 7A1, and 11A1, where A1 is a positive integer. And the other being the family of solutions A1, 11A1, 19 times A1, and 29 times A1, where A1 is a positive integer. This finishes up the problem, and as always, thanks for problem solving.